it's too hot. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. 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 All right. So welcome everybody to the TCAT 10 minute take. So this is our new format. Um, we're still doing TCAD podcast. Don't worry. Tens of listeners. We got you. This is our new um, YouTube video selection in case you want to hang out with us, see what we look like. You know, these will be quick reviews of, you know, one movie, uh, one episode of a TV show. We might start getting into stuff um, like an old movie. If you have any suggestions of things you want us to. Just, just so everybody knows. Yeah. It's too hot. I can't, I, it's just too hot to actually wear anything besides this. Listen, listen, listen. Blazing. It's fine. It's, fine. it's like a thousand degrees outside. Just people to think I'm so <laughs> slovenly, whatever. <laughs> just all it, I'm saying. It's totally cool. Right. Um, but if you have um, any comments on Don's wardrobe um, oh, or any suggestions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, also, make sure that you click that bell and subscribe. So yes. Get all the 10-minute takes. Today, yes. we are talking about Ant-Man because we have both seen it. I saw it today. I saw yes. it like two hours ago. And we have thoughts. <laughs> thoughts. Um, so... We, yes, did we, our, do. we did articulate some of those thoughts in the podcast, but I think we're going to have our, our little set the timer for our, our, our 10 minute take. Um, and we will talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Boom. Boom. All right. Real quick. For me, Ant-Man and the Wasp, good Marvel movie, follows the Marvel formula, great for families and their kids. Very much, uh, I thought, a lighter fare than some of the other Marvel movies. Not that any of the Marvel movies are actually, like, heavy or they're getting incredibly deep or it's dark, per se. Mm -hmm. But this one definitely felt much lighter. And I think it's because, obviously, this villain is not going to be as hardcore as, like, Thanos is. But this had more of a, a theme of family and, uh, uh, you know, uh, friends um, so if, if you've got a couple little ones, uh, bring them in there. I know there was some in the theater and, and they seemed to love it. They were, you know, laughing and cheering all throughout. Um, my only thing is I just thought, uh, villain number one was pretty sympathetic. So, ghost. you know, it goes. So I thought probably earlier on she could have, her and, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, could have come into the fold and, and they could have like joined forces much earlier, I thought, to then deal with villain number two, which to me kind of would have, I don't know if made more, yeah, it would have made more sense to me. But besides that, that's just nitpicking because the movie itself was great. The effects were great. Humor was funny. Paul, Paul Rudd is a perfect Scott Lang. He's a perfect Ant-Man. Um, I will say that they did kind of make Hank Pym a little bit of a dick. Super but, dick, yeah. Super dick, but I get it. Uh, but still, even as a super dick, still, he still, he still kept me interested, still want to know what happened. Um, for me and my rating, I gave this movie like a solid eight. Uh, it's one of those where I would pay full price to go see it. I'd recommend full price to everybody else out there. Obviously, if you're a mall person, you'll enjoy it. And again... After the main credits and after all the other credits, a couple scenes ties into uh, Avengers Infinity War. You're going to want, I mean, it's not vital, vital, like you're going to ruin seeing the next Avengers if you don't see it, but it's just kind of cool to always have that little tie in. So uh, definitely stick around. I mean, we're, we're trained by now. We know what to do. Right. Um I felt like this was kind of a nice, uh, refreshing palate cleanser from the big world ending universe destroying villains that we get with some of the other Marvel movies. Like this was definitely a much more intimate, family oriented, not world shattering consequences. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, you know, the humor in Ant-Man is always really nice and enjoyable and, and it's it's much lighter um i do agree with you the villain of ghost is um i feel like they're they're with their less world ending movies the villains have been a little bit more compelling like when we're talking about uh spider-man homecoming and um the vulture how his motives are definitely 
in a Killmonger and Black Panther, while they're sympathetic, they are still villains. Um, this one, though, I think took that a step too far, like one step too far, where her motives were so sympathetic and so not unreasonable that it didn't make sense for her to necessarily be a villain. Like I get that she's, you know, in a constant situation of torment and pain or whatever, and, and it's mm -hmm. irrational and erratic and unpredictable and a little bit cray because of her situation. But I feel like if, if, you know, Ant-Man and company were able to go to them and ask for help, then they should have been able to feel that they could have in a dire emergency situation like that, they could have just asked for help and three quarters of the way through the movie or, you know, like a good yeah. solid third act yeah. we could have had a redemption for that character that we didn't get yeah. till the very end. I do love, love, love uh, Evangeline Lilly in this movie. I felt like having the wasp be at her full capacity, um, ready to go, like in it to win it was mm. nice. Like I did, we, we were so ripped off of that in the first she Ant Man, she that did. I I really didn't want to see her learn how to use the suit and the wings. Like I wanted her to be like, bam, in it to win it, doing the the do. And she was, and I was like super pleased with that um, because I did feel a little bit robbed of that. They 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 pretty much ripped themselves in half with him justifying why <laughs> she couldn't have been the one just put on the suit. Like it didn't make yeah. any sense. So I do appreciate that. Um, we talked about this uh, on on the show, but I I do just have to say it again that Paul Rudd, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, okay. <laughs> okay, oh my God, listen, like I told you, when you get, when they make you a Marvel hero, event, <laughs> you get the personal trainer, you get the chef, you start looking good, and oh my God, Paul Rudd in his fifties. Yeah. Like, I was never super into Paul Rudd. Like, he was fine, you know, and, and good and fun and cute and, like, clueless right. and what right. have American Summer, and it was just, like, whatever. But don't. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it. I, I wasn't looking at Paul Rudd. Uh, like, he there. might be uh, above the Chris's, all of them. Right. <laughs> Wait, above Chris Evans? All the Chris's. Well, Chris Evans in that beard, you know, he's he's doing the do. However... Okay. Above Thor Hemsworth? I wasn't into Thor until Ragnarok because I always felt like Thor was kind of bland. And got, it's the short and hair that did it. Well, no, it was Taika Waititi being able to let him be goofy and like just kind of like mm -hmm. a big galoot with a sense of humor. Um, but yeah, Paul Rudd. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I also. Yeah, so that was the thing with this villain having her be, you know, not have a redemptive turnaround till the very, very end. It also had your secondary villain, Walton Goggins, and whoever the mysterious nebulous forces that he's working with right. be less impactful. Like if she had had her redemption sooner and then that was the big bad that they all joined forces to, to defeat, I think it would have been a little bit more impactful as a character um michelle pfeiffer is just a freaking movie star like anytime she's mm -hmm. she's got so little to work with in this movie which is kind of a bummer but whatever little like she is just like whatever that it factor is that separates you know oh yeah movie stars she from regular people like michelle pfeiffer with white hair and wrinkles and everything it doesn't michelle pfeiffer is a movie star yeah, um and it's absolutely and and just that small amount of screen time that she has is able to be super impactful and and kind of tie in the the family dynamic of the whole movie as a whole because this movie was definitely more about like families and you know uh scott and his kid and, and you know and his extended, you know, step family and, and, and their whole bonding thing. And then his work family, his friends from, you know, and I love uh, Michael Pena. I think he's oh. fun. I think he's, you know, steals he scenes without being. So funny. He's In so funny. One scene, you know, I'm talking about the truth serum. Truth serum is not truth serum. <laughs> He is so funny and so cute funny. and I love him. And yeah. I felt like he was able to steal scenes without overpowering the the movie which can be kind of a a a, 
detriment to characters like that. They could come in and kind of upend the movie a little bit, which I don't think he, he didn't do that at all. And I love Randall Park. Like, I don't see enough of Randall Park, and I, in general, and I, I really appreciated him in this movie as, like, just, like, the hapless FBI trying to mm-hmm. keep tabs on, on mm-hmm. Ant-Man. Um, all the secondaries in this were, were nice. I just wish, like, Walton Goggins, because Ghost was so bad for so long it almost felt superfluous um so for me i would say that this movie is definitely worth the full price movie theater nighttime oh, yeah. nighttime oh. Oh, nighttime yeah. movie theater price not 3d not not d box not not none of that <laughs> Look, you, 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 you don't need uh, but um imax for this no you don't need real 2d real 3d no forget but all that Forget all that. Money. Just see it normally. It's great. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely worth full price movie theater. But I saw it as a matinee, and I'm happy. Um, so it's whatever, you know. Like it's definitely it's definitely worth a full price movie ticket if I had seen it. So then we get to the uh, the cut scenes, and it brings it all back into the Marvel universe. So if you haven't seen, or if you know you haven't seen it yet, and you don't want any. I mean, spoilers. Um, not that if you've seen the Avengers, then you already know what happens where, you know, in the cut scene, we have Scott's going into the quantum realm to right. try to receive, retrieve some quantum energy because, you know, reasons. And uh, that's our time on the review, which we're done with the review. We're just talking about cut scenes now. So that worked out pretty good. That was our, that was our, we're feeling it out. We're kind of getting the format of the TCAT 10 minute take. Um, but so at the end, we realized that three of our heroes don't make it and Scott's stuck in the quantum realm, which is going to, which just sort of lets us know where this happens in the timeline yep. of infinity war. Like yep. why was Scott not in Wakanda is because he was on house arrest. I guess. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, hey, house arrest is a good enough reason. Right, 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 right. That is true. But Hey, again, that's our 10-minute take. We both loved it. We both say it's worth the full price. I know this shirt is blasphemous. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. So if you haven't seen it yet, go out and see it. But stay tuned. Next week, I have a feeling we're going to make it about either the Equalizer 2. Or? Or? Sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother you. That's right. Boots Riley, Lakeith you know. Stanfield, uh, call centers, all the things that I have mm-hmm. very much an interest in. So if you want to listen to uh, TCAD podcast, we are still doing the show. It's the yep. full hour on St- on Stitcher, iTunes, uh, TuneIn, uh, HipCast, all the places that you find your podcasts. Um, please like and subscribe and so get, subscribe every time you want a tcad 10 minute take and we you know you want to see what we're talking about i mean if you have any ideas any suggestions leave a comment below comment 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 Visit i will us. actually wear a shirt next time yes follow don on twitter at tcad Nobody podcast needs to see the on twitter like this this is just <laughs> if you want to make fun of don's yeah. farmer's tan leave that in the comments you can or follow the trucker's tan or tr- trucker's arm they call it something ridiculous trucker's arm is only one side no, it's when both. You got, when you got your left side and it's all, but it's all like your left arm is like super dark. I got to work That's on That's the trucker's hand. You've got the I, farmer's I got to work stand. on this. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I'm, I don't even want to farm. Listen, no, let no. me get, let me give these good people ways to contact us. <laughs> yes, you do that. <laughs> so <laughs> you can send us emails <laughs> at, um, tcadpodcast at gmail.com you can follow Don on Twitter at tcadpodcast. You can follow me on Twitter at actor on the edge. Um, also, tcadnetwork.com. That's where you can find all of our shows of TCAD Podcast, the new TCAD 10 Minute Takes. You can find Good Morning Antioch, which we will be starting back up soon with new episodes of Good Morning Antioch. That, that shit takes a lot of but it's great. pre-production. It is so great. just so you know. Um, and we'll put all the links down below. Yes. And also the reading. We are going to have some more episodes of the reading. Um, I've got like four episodes of that in the pipeline already recorded. It's just they're being edited. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, visit us. TCAD Networks. TCADnetwork.com. TCADnetwork.com. Hey, Mark. That's Mark. 
Hey, Mark. <laughs>